Welcome back to Trigger Point Tuesday. Just like I promised you last week, this week we're going to talk a little bit of low back pain. I'm going to show you a few things that you can maybe do to help out. But first of all, if you're a personal trainer, always remember not to practice outside of your scope. So if you have any kind of questions or if you have a client that comes to you with low back pain, be sure you refer out to their physician or a licensed practitioner in order to get a little bit more information. Now, there's a few different things we can look at with low back pain. First of all, four out of five people suffer from a low back pain, so a lot of people have it. And it can either be mechanical in nature or non-mechanical. Mechanical low back pain accounts for about 97% of the cases, according to a study out of 2008. And that, that means it's more structural in nature. So this is going to be the type of low back pain that becomes amplified or aggravated if you're in a, a, a seated position for too long, or even if you're standing for too long. So we see with static positions it becomes amplified. And then with more dynamic positions, we start to reduce some of those symptoms. So, for example, as you're walking, that multidirectional force on the spine, if that's reducing your symptoms of low back pain, then it's considered to be mechanical in nature. Now, non-mechanical is more of a neurological toward sort of an issue. So it could be something to do more with, with nerves, or we can even start to see gastrointestinal problems in low back pain. So there can be two different types here. Now, again, what I would suggest is refer out to your doctor to try to figure out a little bit more information. Now, if it's mechanical in nature, we can start to see some things in movement patterns that are indicative of such a, a problem with low back pain. So what I like to use is the National Academy of Sports Medicine's overhead squat assessment. And with this, we're basically just going to get a snapshot of movement. And we're going to look at a couple of things if there's low back pain. The first thing we would like to look at is the the angle of the torso and the tibia. So as someone squats, this line should be parallel to that line. If it converges, then it tells you that there's some sort of improper loading in the hips. That may have something to do with low back pain. And another thing we can look for is an arch in the low back which a lot of people seem to have that. And that tells us our hamstrings are lengthened and we talked about that a little bit a couple of weeks ago. One last thing you can look out for, and of course there's more things going on, but just real quick snapshots, is something that I call a knee wobble. So if somebody drops into a squat, as they're coming up, if you see their knees wobble, then that's a good indication that there's some overactivity in the adductor magnus, and we've talked about that in the past as well. So if the glutes aren't firing, that adductor fires just a little bit too quick, and we'll see the knees wobble in, and then they line up. So the three things you could look for is excessive forward lean, arch in the low back, and then that little knee wobble. Now for those, what we're going to look, look at with our self fascia release is the calves, that adductor magnus, and then the TFL, the quad. So one of those hip flexors and then down the quad. Now we've covered most of these, so we're just going to go through the setup real briefly and then move on. So remember, if this is a corrective exercise approach, we want to actually inhibit those muscles. So for this inhibition technique, we're going to start right above the ankle, cross one leg over the other for that added compression. And here, let's do a little bit more of a search and destroy type of a mission. So start to roll up that leg very slowly. We're not trying to start a fire. And if you find a tender spot, I want you to stop and hold. And you're just going to hold until you get a reduction in that pain. Usually takes somewhere between 20 or 30 seconds. And once you start to feel that reduction, let's remember those techniques we've talked about and let's get a little bit of motion in that ankle. So you can do some foot circles or you can just pull those toes up closer to the shin and then back down. So that's going to be your calf release. And feel free to continue that process up the calf. Now for our TFL, first thing I want you to do is find the TFL. And one of the things I see is that people have a tough time even knowing where that TFL is. So if you take your hand and put it right out here on the outside of your hip, and let's just start to go into a little bit of internal rotation, so you can see my foot here is starting to come out, you can feel that TFL pop up into your hand. Whenever you feel it, that's where you're going to place the roller. So take your grid foam roller, you're going to use body weight compression again, and come right down here onto your side. Now again, here you can bring the hips forward slightly, you can bring them back, and whenever you find that tender spot, you're just going to stop and hold. Be sure you breathe, try to relax, and after 20 to 30 seconds, you should feel a reduction in pain. Once you feel that, we're going to get a little bit of mo motion. So here you can bend the knee. Hopefully you can see this okay. My knee here is bent. And then let this foot start to fall to the outside. 
So just like we've talked about in the past, we're pinning down that TFL, and then we're making that femur internally rotate underneath it, getting us a little bit more of that myofascial release component. Now, whenever we go to the adductor magnus, this is going to look a lot like a hamstring release. We're going to take, and again, there's another video on this where we're up on a bench. But for today, we're going to use it just here on the ground. So here, we're going to slide it up into the hip, just like we're going to go to the hamstring. But then, position this right off of that butt bone, the ischial tuberosity. Then I want you to internally rotate this leg, so a slight angle. And that's going to get to those posterior fibers of the adductor magnus. Now, if this is overactive, you're going to feel this very nicely. Again, 20 to 30 seconds. Once you start to feel that release, add in just a little bit of motion. Remember, we want to reintroduce that relative movement between the tissues. And again, a few motions through that. Now, as soon as we get that, we're going to go through a little bit of static stretching. Now, this is a corrective exercise routine, so we're going to static stretch before we activate some muscles. Since we release that hip flexor, just go into a basic kneeling hip flexor stretch. Now, in order for this to work, you have to go into a posterior pelvic tilt. So squeeze that rear end cheek, torso nice and straight. Bring the hips forward just a bit. That's a technical term, a bit. We only have about 15 degrees of hip extension. So if you're going really far forward, you're bypassing that mark. So let's just keep nice, neutral spine, glute squeezed. And again, we're going to hold for about 20 to 30 seconds. Once we've done that on both sides, now we're going to look at an adductor magnus stretch. Now the way I like to do this, come into a tabletop position, because remember we released the adductor magnus. Now we're going to add a little bit of length to it. Tabletop position here. Let's put an arch in your low back. This is the only time I really want you to get that arch there in the low back. And then we're going to bring that leg out to the side. So we're going to abduct, arch the low back here, and then just apply a little bit of pressure back. With all these stretches, you just take to a point of tension, and then you stop and hold. So here, slight arch in the low back. At least the low back's not rounding. Hold pressure, breathe, 20 to 30 seconds. And then from there, we can go right into a calf stretch. Here, I suggest just your basic standing calf stretch. Ideally, we would be right up against a wall, so that way you could sort of lean into it. My back foot here is going to be slightly internally rotated. I want to make sure it's not externally rotated. Contract the quad, the glute, abdominals, and then just lean forward until you feel that tension. Stretches don't have to hurt. Take to a point of tension and hold 20 to 30 seconds. So with that, we did an inhibition technique. So we used the grid foam roller to find some tender spots and stop and hold. We added a little bit of link with some static stretching. Remember a 20 to 30 second hold, be sure you're breathing. Your next step would be to go through some sort of an activation technique. So the muscles you would want to activate would be the glutes, so you could do a basic bridge, deep core muscles, so you could go into a plank. And then after that, go through an integrated exercise. So that would be anything total body where you're focusing on form and maintaining that proper muscle activation throughout that range of motion. What I would suggest is that you go to b2cfitness.com and look up some of Brent's work on the posterior oblique subsystem. And he talks about a squat to row, which is a great integration technique. So this video was a little bit longer today. There was a lot of information there. I hope you enjoy it. Give it a shot and let me know how it works. And as always, leave us some feedback on Facebook. Let us know if you have any specific concerns or specific questions, and hopefully I can do some research and address it. And that's it for Trigger Point Tuesday. We'll see you next week.